So I think we can start since we have to be on time. So we can start with the <coughs> live streaming. Perfect, everything is fine. I want to thank everyone that are not here in the audience, but they are following the live stream from far away. I'm Luca Pellegrini, Dean of the Faculty of Communication of this university. My role is to place this course within the educa educational offer of the university. This faculty has two first second degree programs, one of them aimed at training those who will deal with management of corporate communication processes, that is PR and corporate communication, and the other one aimed at training those who create communication messages for the uh, cinema, for TV, so we have two first second degree programs they may seem similar but they are very different one is more creative for those who are more creative the other one is more corporate related So we have what's our postgraduate offer. We have two postgraduate programs related to the undergraduate course in public relations. One is called marketing and communication. As you can see, the key word is marketing. We are talking about corporate communication and in particular product communication. That means communication aiming at building both the corporate reputation and the product reputation in order to sell it to the public. So this is the marketing course, which will be presented later in 45 minutes. Then we have the course we are presenting now, strategic communication. It is entirely taught in English and deals deals with the highest level of communication, that is, communication that creates the corporate communication, uh, reputation, sorry. So how to manage corporate communication. This is the course we are introducing now, and it is coordinated by Professor Romanti, who's sitting here next to me. So I give her the floor. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. And good morning to those who are following the live streaming. Today's goal is to present to present you the main features and the main objectives of this degree course. Sure, you can find more details on the website, but today we want to focus on the key aspects. And to do so, there are a few professors here with me, Professor Invernizzi, who teaches public relations and communication at Ulm University, and he's also chairman of the advisory board of the companies that collaborate with this master's degree course. Then we have Dr. Luciano Lofarelli, who represents one of these companies. He's head of communication of Piaggio Aerospace, and he's also a professor of, for this postgraduate program. First thing, I want to focus on are the results of some international research, because this course was created 
by listening to the needs of the companies and the international marketing and it, uh, by monitoring the research trends. And as you can see, the first important strategic issue for communication management is the need to link business strategy with communication. So communication is used for the business. It is, it is used to translate the corporate strategy and the corporate strategic goals into communication goals and strategies. As you can see from the slide, there are other important trends related to the digital revolution. And of course, during this program, you will have digital communication lessons, but in some ways, each lesson, each course will deal with the digital field. As you can see from point four and point five, big data play an important role. I'm sure you heard, you heard of it, algorithms and communication measurements. And as a consequence, the fact that communication by becoming a business function needs data and the ability of analyzing data, presenting and interpreting them. That's why there will be courses on this subject, which are not limited to classic data analysis, but these courses focus on how to draw insights from data, to clues on how to make business decisions. In this slide, you can see the main five, the five main pillars of this master's course. This course, you know, as you know, was born two years ago. And these are the things we worked really hard on. First of all, our courses are the result of a series of managerial subjects and more communication-centered subjects. So if you look at this slide, during their first year, students attend a series of courses related to business, management, strategy, organizational behavior. For example, that means understanding how organizations, team, and the leadership work. Then we have brand identity reputation. We're talking about marketing communication, reputation management, identity management. All these intangible assets are of paramount importance for communicators because that's how results are measured. Other important subjects are, for example, digital communication management and content management as well, storytelling. So the ability of managing contents and communication tools. Second year courses, in particular during their first semester, they will focus more on specialized communication. So you can see, for example, the crisis communication course taught by Dr. Ruffarelli, the CSR, social communication of social responsibility. Of so the second semester of the second year, will be mainly dedicated to the internship or to the field project, and we'll talk about that later on. So second thing I want to talk about is teaching methods. We've thought about contents, now we talk about the methods we use. What we really care about is to use 
international teaching methods. So basically discussing case studies during classes, working in groups, individual work works, there is so much work to do and sometimes students of the f of the first year complain about how many group projects they work on and then students work on projects of company briefs the companies taking part in our advisory board have not only helped us to design this master's course but they offered real projects to students projects which our students can work and discuss on so, as I was saying before, uh, the second semester of the second year is dedicated to a field project. This project is mm, different from the other projects and work, um, group works. So, a field project is actually a consultancy project. So, we choose one or two. Obviously, they're financed by the companies and students work in groups as if they were actual consultancy, consultancy groups. As an alternative to field projects, students can choose to do an internship. It can be done abroad or in Italy. Student, students can choose to stay in Italy after graduation because in Italy there are many companies where English is the main language, so they're very uh, international. So we spoke about contents, about teaching methods, I want to say a few words about the faculty, so the professors. Usually, we are asked always the same question. So, do the professors of this course come from abroad? The answer is no, but this has no negative impact on the quality of the master's course. So our students, in fact, are very satisfied with the quality of the teaching, of teaching, because the main thing is that we choose professors, we, cho we choose professionals like Dr. Luferelli, who speak English when they work. So we take into consideration professors and professionals who have experience abroad. So besides Italian teachers, we will have several international teachers, like as you can see from the slide, like Professor Kelly Werder Page will teach statistics and data analysis because she teaches strategic research communication research at the University of South Florida, or Professor Chiara Valentini, who is Italian, but has been living for, I guess, 20 years abroad now. She works at the University of Aarhus and will teach public affairs. Then we have Professor Laura Ilia. She comes from Switzerland and will teach CSR together with Joachim, Joachim Lundquist who is a professional from an international profes professional. We tend to create a mix of professional and technical competencies in order to have two teachers for a course. One, one of them dealing with the theory part and, and the other ones, the professional, who can contribute to the course with their important on-field experience. So we are organized, you can find the links online, a series of open lessons with international guest speakers. In fact, during the academic year, we host a lot of professors from other universities or professionals so they can teach a lesson, they can teach lessons or more. For example, Mariana Ghirlanda, who works for Google, and she was chosen for her professional experience. She was. So they come to class 
and they teach lessons to the students. Another main pillar of our course is the connection with other universities, the collaborations. Relationships with other universities can vary. So you all know the your experience the Erasmus program some one of you may have already attended the Erasmus program and that means going for us abroad for a semester in another university uh, you take exams and then you come back to your university alongside with the Erasmus exchange program with these universities there are further opportunities so these are the universities um, hosting our students for the Erasmus program. But there are more, the most important opportunity, which I can officially talk about now, is the dual degree program. We're currently working with three universities. But the collaboration which has been approved is the one with Huddersfield University in marketing communications. This is a dual degree program. So this is not an Erasmus program. This means that you finish your exam sessions here in Italy and then you go for a semester. You go to, to the UK at the Huddersfield University where you will take courses and you will obtain an additional degree in marketing communications. So you will spend several months in another university. You will be required to pay the university fee to take the exams because you need to achieve 30 ECTS at uh, the Austin University, and I can tell you that the fee is, I guess, around £2,000, but each year there may be modifications and changes in the fees. As you can see, we added two more English universities, Birmingham, Uni Birmingham University and Cardiff University. We're currently working on these two, and maybe around September we'll get the responses. Uh, universities are agree on our program, but we are doing the red tape, the bureaucracy part. And as you can see, with the Brexit situation, uh, sealing these agreements is quite difficult and the Dean knows it. So these collaborations are very, so the universities are very demanding. So in September you will get the, uh, the official news. In that case, uh, the programs are related, uh, related to international management. Uh, if you want more details, Dr. Kripa here, who dealt with these um, agreements with the universities here, so you can talk to her and ask questions. So let's talk about the advisory board now, who helped us. And I will give the floor to Professor Imbrunizzi. Yeah, I would say that a feature of this degree course is the thing that it was born f thanks to the relationship with uh, the companies, with enterprises. When the professor and I uh, started the design of this course three years ago, we, we started a conversation with the companies because we had clear ideas we had our we had we knew what we wanted but we wanted uh, the opinion of professionals as well those 
di professional who, who will be your employers when, once you graduate. So I will work, so we worked closely with these companies and I'm talking about companies like uh, relevant companies in Italy, uh, for example, Eni, Enel, Ferrero, Lavazza, Barilla. So companies which are present in Italy and they may, may be interested in hiring you. The first thing uh, we decided is that uh, the course is entirely taught in English because we talked to companies and to employers and we, they said to us, we, uh, when we do interviews, we do it in English. So that was clear. The course should be entirely taught in English. The second thing was that we wanted a degree course that alongside communication techniques could, could add other competencies, for example, the, uh, for example, management com competencies, management skills. So we want to train people and students that can be that can become managers, that can communicate with their peers in the companies. So companies do not need only communicators, but they need managers that can support communication process and other functions in the company. So they have to be able to be consultants. So they need management skills. Another feature of this master's degree course is the entrepreneurship. So communication is an ever-changing science. So CEOs do not always know what they what they really need. So those who are responsible for communication need to be entrepreneurs as well because they need to propose, they need to offer activities, communication activities, which are useful to the success, to the economic success of the company. So this is the, the core uh, of our master's degree, master's degree course. And that's why I think, I believe this is quite unique master's degree course. And uh, companies have really helped us in designing the course and planning. So I would stop here and I will give the floor to Dr. Luciano Lofarelli who is one of the members of our advisory board. So what can I say? <laughs> you have, you've already said a lot. So a few mm, ideas. First of all, I would say that up until a few years ago, communicators were only uh, professionals learning skills and then put them into practice, implementing them. And the CEO, who doesn't always understand what communication is, so the CEO has become the real head of communication because the communicator would be available and would make available uh, their skills for the company. So the main objective of a master's degree course should be acquiring the ability to sit uh, with the CEO and communicate with him or her. So this is one of the most important things. 
There are three important things. The first one is to be informed of on everything. You need to know what's happening around you. And if you don't know anything, you cannot communicate. The second thing is to know English, to speak English. Um, our company is owned by a sovereign fund from the Emirates, and we only work in English. We do interviews, but we work, we daily work in English. We don't speak English when we are only Italians, but the corporate communication is in English as well. The third important thing is the understanding of managerial dynamics. So understanding what, what the mechanisms are uh, that, that can help a company. I started as a journalist, I entered a listed company and I it took me two years to understand the dynamics of, of a company of the company so so that I could really implement so that my skills. I think and I know that because we're working on this on the, um, the course of the second year so the important thing is creating the conditions of a, a real company so if i if i were if i interviewed if i interviewed a student from this university i would uh, ask him or her if they read journals read magazines if they know if they speak english and if i if i knew that they come from such a university, I would know that they studied certain subjects um, and I would know that they are prepared to work in a specific company. So I would like to focus on the last slide. Uh, maybe you all know the admission requirements. Uh, all eligible applicants must have at least 12 credits in the academic discipline uh, and applicants must possess an international certification that proves that English language proficiency is at minimum B2 level. The admission test is an interview that aims to assess the candidate's personal knowledge and the interview will be conducted in English. The topics covered in the chapters are in the chapters listed below and can also be studied or reviewed in other textbooks. So I would stop here and I would like to go on with questions if you have, qu if you have any. We were so clear that there are no questions. I would like to know how the admission works. If you have 12 ECTS in English, you have access to the interview or there's a test before. So the interview is mandatory for everyone. But as a requirement to, to, to do the interview, you need to have a s an English certification that proves that the student has a B2 English level. But the interview is mandatory for everyone. So, regarding the companies, we work with Italian companies or with 
uh, international companies working on in Italy. L'inglese ormai è il fatto di conoscere questi contenuti e di avere una profonda conoscenza, una dimestichezza con la lingua inglese per, parlarne, per parlare tutti i giorni e per lavorarci, perché è diverso è conoscere l'inglese per andare in vacanza, un conto è invece doverci lavorare, dover scrivere dei documenti, dover eh, lavorare a delle negoziazioni o partecipare a delle riunioni, eh, ormai, come diceva prima anche il dottor Luffarelli, è eh, praticamente eh, un'attività eh, no? molto diffusa anche nelle aziende anche nelle aziende italiane, quindi eh, non necessariamente gli sbocchi sono solo uh, sul, sull'internazionale. Comunque, per rispondere alla sua domanda, diciamo che noi abbiamo due uh, canali. Uh, so, first of all, uh, we have two important channels. First of all, we have a placement office. So, the office dealing with and who is responsible for internships abroad or in Italy and responsible for job offers in Italy and abroad. In October, we're starting the second year, and since October, starting from October, we are organizing a series of meetings meetings called job days. So days dedicated to to imitating the uh, the to companies. So companies come here and they simulate uh, interviews with our students. After that, we have another channel. I'll give you an example. So per appunto al secondo semestre del secondo anno per consentire agli studenti di chiudere l'attività didattica. Però durante il primo anno eh, abbiamo During the first year we had a course reputation management held by a professor who was used to teach at Copenhagen University responsabile della ricerca mondo del Reputation Institute e questa persona And during the classes uh, she she saw something in our students, so she was interested in um, our students, so she offered them the job directly, or internships. So, of course, Dr. Ruffelsley told me that there's a position open at his company, but if we look at numbers, we work with 40 companies and we have 75 students, so this may work. Of course, students have to be ready they have to be active. They need to create relationships with the professors. So sending a CV is not simply enough. So sometimes when, in, when we invite companies to So when invite companies someone some students arrive with their resumes last week we had a lesson with Coca-Cola they and some students arrived with their resume. So this person collected the resumes and he was struck by the entrepreneurship of our students. So there are many occasions, so we create occasions, we create opportunities, but it is up to the students to seize the opportunity. The important thing is that you have a background in terms of skills and competencies. Competencies, sorry. 
I'm studying interpreting and I was wondering how bad is that we didn't study um, public relations taking into consideration that we study economics, international economics, and I've read the uh, book about marketing and we we studied those things. Okay, you would, you should ask our students who studied interpreting. We didn't notice any difference. We organized a series of meetings with our students in order to understand the quality of the course and the, and the students coming from uh, interpreting courses or language courses uh, have no difficulties in studying strategic communication. Maybe statistics and data analysis could be more difficult for these students, but but nothing is impossible and uh, teachers and professors take these uh, factor into consideration. Please Luciano, I would like to add, you need to understand that companies are hungry for talents, we look for talents, we're looking for talents. Recently, I've been looking for um, candidates for two positions, uh, two senior positions. One of them was, we found someone really quickly. The other one, we're struggling to find someone. There's an intern in our department. So it's not easy for us to find the right people So it is important to know how to relate to people, to, to communicate with people. So when I receive an email, uh, if there are two uh, technical in what they're writing, I, I'm not interested in it. When I see, oh dear Dr. Ruffarelli, I'm writing to you because, okay, that's what I'm interested in. Um, so that this idea that you cannot enter a company because there is another way, in other ways, but the only thing you have to do is to show your talent. If you feel that you can do this job, you can do this job, you need to show it because we are hungry for talents. There are few talents, maybe 20% in a big company. So we are always looking for people who, are who want to do something. So I agree on what Dr. Loferelli said. The job market is strange, it's weird. So people cannot find a job, but companies cannot find candidates. But why? Because people on the market are not uh, meeting their demands, their requirements. But how can we be re can you be ready? You need to be prepared. And you need to add uh, something more, the entrepreneurship, in order to show your talent. And this is crucial. 
It's about your ability to relate to people, to your employers. You need to have skills, of course, but then you have to put that into practice, to, to highlight your talents. I'll give you an example. We'll always We'll always, we've always mm, organized meetings with have head of communication of several companies in order to explain to students what they expect from our students, from students uh, who enter the job market. And the interesting thing is that people and directors participating in these meetings, they tell us what they are looking for and maybe the core element could be knowing that Dr. Lufarelli would organize a meeting they look up Dr. Lufarelli on the internet they are interested in this company and they send him an email so they have to be interested in what is going on around them so entrepreneurship is the core uh, the core factor when you're looking for a job and when you apply for a job as well <laughs> this was a coaching lesson <laughs> as well <laughs> So if you don't have further questions, we can go on. Are there further questions? Otherwise, we are here outside the room and we are available to answer your questions or your, to clear your mind. Thank you and have a great day.